What is good Tesla family, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the one and only Tesla stock and what you should be looking after for the future. I'm also going to break down what on earth is going on with the share price as I give you guys my price prediction and what's going on with the overall markets as some very big news is coming out in the next couple of days. And this will be huge for our economy, for the Fed's policies and also Tesla stock. I'm also going to end the video by talking about what Elon Musk, the man, the myth, the legend Elon Musk put on his Twitter page, which is a very big reminder for everyone. Now, before I break any of this information, down before I get into any details, I do have to mention a couple of things real quick. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner, don't take any of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. Not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Tesla community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks, each worth up to $2,000. The best part is, any of of these 12 free stocks could be a free tesla share a free neo share or a mix of all of them it's a limited time offer the offer ends in just two weeks check it out before they run out with that out of the way let's get on with the video so tesla was down 6.32 percent for the day on friday it did take a big hit with the overall market however guys this is not necessarily the end of the world because we do have a very big day coming ahead of us on wednesday so looking at the data on wednesday we have cpi coming out again this is going to be very important because it's going to be affecting what the fed is going to end up doing and give us some very good insights on what on earth is going on with inflation now it is important to note that cpi is very manipulated so this data should be taken with a grain of salt to some degree but it being accepted by the markets is what makes this very important it's coming out on October 13th at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, so before the market opens. And we can actually see how this really affects the markets if we look at the daily on SPY. Just real quick, you guys will notice that going all the way here, SPY was actually rallying right here. Right? We had these like four green candles in a row. And this is indicative of the fact that the market tends to rally to the upside before these CPI dates come out. And what happened was CPI came out on September 13th. That was the last time it came out. And this was a big miss. The market did not like what happened. It was hotter than expected CPI, which means inflation was higher than we would have wanted. And the market dumped after that. And since then, we've had this major downtrend that just continued over the last couple of weeks. So that's how important and how powerful CPI is, because if it's high, it's an indication that the jumps market being too strong is not also a good sign. And with all that together, it really incentivizes the Fed to be more strict on policy, to really continue to raise the federal funds rate more and more, and to really drag markets down, unfortunately. So what's going on with the data? What's going to happen, in my opinion? Well, we don't truly know. And this is a lesson I learned, because when we look at the data for August, you will notice that gas prices actually came down on average for retail by about 60 cents, right? Around that. So over 60 cents. And despite gas going down and despite how big of a sector energy is weighted into CPI, CPI was still pretty high despite that. So even though it's coming down again for the month of September, Many people are hoping that CPI cools off, very possible, but I'm still very cautious and prepared for anything, anything. So with that said, it's very important to be very careful in a market like this. Fear is still driving the market, but historically the market tends to push up during these CPI days. So I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see some green for the markets for the next couple of days until the data comes out. So looking at the data right now, it does look like the SPY is coming down, but we're coming to a very, very critical zone. Right here, this 360 to 358, 357 zone is where we should get a nice bounce, in my honest opinion, because this is the low we actually made, and this is where SPY is going to be testing this very critical level. As a result of it maybe coming down a bit more and hoping for a bounce there, that could have a very similar effect on Tesla. The market is still possibly capitulating there's still panic and fear driving this market and there's a lot of flood coming out about a potential crash but when the market kind of like sells off like at such a fast rate in such a short period of time some green here and there is completely normal and i am anticipating a slight balance coming pretty soon on the daily on tesla you will notice that 
uh, we are super oversold on the RSI. Right now, the RSI is oversold on the daily. We tend to see some bounces when the RSI makes it this low on those daily charts, just like this instant right here. And I'm not saying it's going to happen like immediately. I'm not saying it's going to take us to like these highs all the way back to like 270 or like 300, anything like that. But I do think Tesla is set for some relief, at least temporarily. So where is Tesla going to go to? Are we going to drop more? What on earth is the data showing us? Right now, uh, let me pull up my levels. Right now, it looks like Tesla's entering a very critical zone. We broke below 233. We couldn't actually hold that. We broke below 226. That was another critical zone. We also broke below that. We could not hold that. So the next key zone for me would be watching between 220 and 216. Now, what's possible is Tesla just gaps up and continues to push into open because, you know, we're super oversold. It's a Monday. CPI is coming out. But if we don't start to bounce from here, because I can't promise we're going to immediately just start running up into open tomorrow because of the fact that there's not true confirmation of a bounce just yet. So it is possible for Tesla to come down a bit more and I'd hope for a bounce in these particular levels. So if Tesla comes down, all right, it's very likely we test 220. If we don't get a bounce there, I'd be hoping for a bounce between 220 and 216 if Tesla truly does come down here. This is a very critical zone. Now, if Tesla does not bounce off 216, all right, we have a lot of room to fall to about 210. And if that's the case, if we start seeing this like below or very close to the 210 range, the last time Tesla came to these low levels this year, we ended up getting a big bounce off 206. So I'm hoping that we come to this critical zone between 210 and 206 if we come down and we get a bounce right over there. So these are the two main bounce zones, in my honest opinion, if Tesla does continue to drop. Now, we are green in the after hours, and we have been seeing the overall volume picking up over the last couple of days. Tesla was dropping on high volume, but if the volume is also high and we do see a lot of buyers stepping in, at the same time, this could push us to the upside as well. Tesla also has this nice gap all the way up at about that 238 to 237 to 238 range. I believe that if Tesla gets a clean break above 230 and we see volume continuing to come in, it's very likely we fill this gap and Tesla could come very close to that 240 zone. And we have a lot of chop right over here between 235 and about 242. We could come back to this zone pretty quickly if we see enough buyers step in. And I do believe it's going to happen pretty soon. At least I hope so. But where we go after Wednesday depends on CPI as well. So uh, Elon Musk and like Twitter, they have this like whole fiasco going on that also will affect Tesla. But what I'm anticipating for tomorrow is a move like this. I do believe it's possible for us to gap up, but just to be more cautious, I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla does something like this. We drop a bit into open and we enter this very, very key zone like right here. It's very possible. I'm hoping this thing gets a nice bounce after that. Lots of buyers should step in and we should actually start to push to the upside from here. So Tesla, if we get a nice break above 226, this thing has the potential to go all the way up to that 230. And if we could hold 230, that would be a very, very good sign for the next couple of days to potentially fill this gap. We could even go a little bit above that around that 233 because that was where Tesla actually ended up uh, holding up as previous support. So that's going to be another very key resistance level. So watch 233 very carefully. And I do believe we could see a move kind of like this, kind of close around this 230 to 233 range, kind of green for the next day. Now, if this is not the case, all right, if we don't even come down from here, it's also possible for us to just gap up and start pushing well into open and start pushing to fill this gap immediately. It could happen much sooner than some people anticipate because this thing can move very fast in a very short period of time. But overall, I'm a little bit more bullish than bearish for tomorrow, maybe the next couple of days. As historically, like I said, we tend to push up as we approach CPI. So this is what I'm essentially predicting. But if I'm wrong, because you can't always predict every single detail in the markets, sometimes unexpected news comes. It's important to know your support and resistance levels and watch your indicators very, very carefully. So uh, I already talked about uh, the key support zones. So please watch those very carefully. And the last thing I want to talk about is what Elon Musk mentioned on his Twitter page. Elon Musk was actually asked, OK, what are your plans on Sunday? And Musk responded Sunday morning to bake or not to bake cookies. That is not even a question. Definitely bake. So the point I'm trying to make here is, look, Elon Musk takes breaks. Elon Musk has those off days where he bakes cookies, where he, uh, you know, tweets things on Twitter. He takes time off. He spends times, spends lots of time with his like children. And I want to just make it very clear that 
Working very hard is pivotal for our society. I appreciate hard work. It is a part of our lives and it's amazing. But at the same time, breaks are just as amazing too. It's important to take time off the gym, take time and have those rest days, rest yourself, get ready. And you have to really do this to really keep your mental health health together and to really, really continue to thrive and succeed. Even Elon Musk takes those breaks. So I want to make that very clear. I want the best for everyone. So please enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Remain calm, cool, and collected and get ready as CPI is coming very soon. Thank you all for listening. Have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Tesla to the moon because the long-term future is still incredibly bright and peace out.